Thanks to Ubisoft for providing me access to the crew mortar fest and hey everyone missed him sit here so normally I don't make these kind of videos but I do want to kind of express my feelings and talk about my experience with the crew mortar fest so far and I do apologize ahead of time if if it's all over the place but I just want to get this video out because I have some things I want to say about this game so let's go ahead and get that started. So towards the beginning of the game you do get a bit of a preview of some of the playlists that you'll experience so these playlists have different things, themes so for example this one is mainly Japan so this one focuses on the Japanese cars and each of the playlists that I've experienced so far have their own different unique themes so they don't feel too similar to each other you know of course there are going to be uh, these point to point races or or circuit races where you do a number of laps but the way that there's the decorations and all that it does make these races feel a bit more unique especially in terms of the playlists so there's Main Japan which was pretty fun to do. There's also Vintage Garage where you... <laughs> What's interesting about this one is that you don't have the little navigation map on the lower right hand corners of the screen. So on some of these events you are given a photograph where you have to try to figure out where you need to go and, and just hope that you don't get lost along the way. It, it, it's not as hard as it sounds but... It, it was a pretty interesting twist to just not having the maps you use pictures you try to make your way through and then there is the Lamborghini playlist where well you, you drop Lamborghinis uh, this is actually one of the playlists that I haven't gotten to yet because this playlist if I remember correctly you need to buy a specific Lamborghini to be able to access their first event in which I think it's the Lamborghini Miura but I haven't purchased it yet so unfortunately I haven't been able, haven't been able to experience a full playlist but still uh, this little snippet right here gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. Now eventually you will have to choose your starter car so your decisions or your choices range from the BMW Z4, the Honda S2000 and the Ford Mustang. And I wouldn't think about which car to choose for too long because you can get the other cars down the line. You just need to get the credits to buy them. So uh, pick whichever one you like the most and just go with it. So with me, I went ahead and picked the Honda S2000. And after that, you can pretty much just do whatever you want as you'll be released into free mode. So one of the first things I did was drove around a bit and then went ahead and tried to get a picture of my first car so the photo mode I think it's all right there are some things that works pretty well and other things where I think it could be improved upon a bit more so one of the things that works pretty well is that you can you can change the time of day in photo mode and to some extent you can change the weather so there's the different times of day right so there's sunrise morning midday afternoon and then there's even the half hour selectors just below that so for example you can select 17 hours 17 and a half hours uh, if it's within the sunset category let's say but you kind of have to guess which one is the weather that you'll be getting because there's some where it's sunny and then there's others where it's raining it doesn't really tell you which uh, weather you're going to get within that uh, weather and or time of day and the hour. So you kind of just have to fiddle around and hope that you get the weather you want. The exposure settings, I mean, they're it's pretty straightforward. Nothing too special there. In terms of the motion blur, this one, I'm still trying to get used to it because when I was trying to take a picture of the Honda S2K with the motion blur it didn't really look like things were moving but then later on I took a picture of the Pony GT or the Judge with the motion blur and that one kind of worked except the rims looked like they weren't moving so that was pretty awkward right there. 
So adding something like a shutter speed where you can control how fast you want your car to look like it's moving or how slow you want it to look like it's moving, that'd be pretty cool to add. The focus feature, I mean, that one's all right as well, but I think I would appreciate having something like the aperture feature where you can dictate how much you want your depth of field, so how much you want to look like it's in focus and then kind of just blur everything else out. I think having some control of that, that would be a cool feature to add as well. I mean, and, and I'm just saying this because I like taking pictures of cars in real life, so I was kind of getting a little nitpicky when it comes to this stuff. And when you're ready, go ahead and press the snapshot button, and there we go. So this was the photo I ended up taking of the Honda S2K. Uh, looks pretty cool. The photo mode still works pretty well, so pretty happy about that. And I also want to note, for those on the PlayStation 5, not sure about the PlayStation 4, but for those on the PlayStation 5, the photos that you take go to the media gallery. So look there and your photos should be hanging out there. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to find my way to the Made in Japan event. So by pressing the right side of the touchpad on the DualSense controller, and you can access the world map that way, you can zoom out out this much so unfortunately you, you can't see the whole island but you can zoom in pretty close to the surface or the ground and you can even potentially find some of like the hidden boxes that give you loot if you open them up so if you find one just set as a waypoint and make your way there there is fast travel but you do have to progress pretty deep into the playlist so i think you have to complete nine playlists to be able to access the fast travel for everything there is some fast travel so you can go to like the main hub you can just fast travel there grand race and the demo dirty battle royale mode so the multiplayer modes those you can fast travel as well and you can also change it to a plane or boat. I mean, I've never played the Crew 2, so this was a first for me. I mean, I didn't have a boat or a plane at that time, but having the option to just switch to any of those vehicles on the fly, I mean, that, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, and later on, I do try that out, and I, I think it's a really neat feature. And okay, where's that van going? Anyways. But yeah, it, it's a neat feature and I was pretty excited to try it out once I got my hands on a plane and a boat. All right, so I'm gonna make my way towards the first event of the Mini Japan players. And I do want to note that for some of these events, you're given a loaner car, so I can't use my Honda S2K just yet. I actually have to use the loaner Acura NSX. However, if you want to use your car for these events, you have to go complete all the events of that playlist and then you'll be given the custom mode where you can change the time of day, you can even, even enable clean race bonus if you want to try to get a few more credits by not crashing into anything and you'll be able to pick your car. Alright, so this was the first race from that playlist and Here's the thing, so I was messing around with the AI settings, so I had the AI at 5 out of 5 difficulty, so at the hardest difficulty, and these AI cars can get pretty feisty, so you do have to be a bit aware of that, kind of prepare yourself for that. And the AR are sometimes a mixed bag because sometimes they're a really good challenge. Like you, you can have a lot of fun just really fighting it out for the win. But then there are other times where the AI, they kind of just don't go fast. but Or they just really mess up by hitting a tree or hitting a barrier. But then there are times where the AR are stupidly good fast to the point where you just cannot catch up to them and and you yeah you end up losing so i kept messing around with the ai at difficulty four and five and ultimately i ended up sticking with the ai at difficulty four out of five so i would suggest 
just fiddling around with the AI difficulty because sometimes they can give you a pretty good challenge but there are other times where they're really difficult or other times where they just make some really questionable driving choices. Yeah this race luckily ended up winning the race but yeah these AI cars they ended up giving me a bit of a run for my money. Still pretty fun to do so let's go ahead and move on. So eventually I went ahead and completed the Mini Japan playlist so now there's custom race so if I want to do a certain race from Mini Japan with any car I want I can go ahead and do that now. There's also the challenges so it's kind of like side objectives so for example own an underglow in which I already got that so I'm gonna go ahead and redeem the rewards for that. There's other challenges where you have to do a specific race or a specific race with a specific car or go to a specific place with a specific car. There's a lot of challenges that you'll be able to do and get credits, XP, or even get loot from those challenges. So quite a few things to do so it's not over once you complete the events which is pretty nice. Alright so this is pretty much what I'm most excited to talk about. So the Grand Race is a race where you race with up to 27 other people and each race has different classes. So for example you might start on street tier 2 cars then at some point you'll switch over to rally raid cars and then for the final stretch you'll switch over to racing cars. And each race is a bit different because sometimes you go through one path in one race and then you go through another path in another race or every I think it's about 30 minutes the race changes location so you'll be racing somewhere else. You will have time to be able to pick a different car if you own one if you don't then you get a loaner car. The loaner cars can be pretty competitive so don't worry too much if you don't have any cars for that category and <laughs> here's a really fun thing about this race so racing with up to 28 other people I think you only need 14 or 15 people to start a grand race yeah this is where it just gets hilariously fun because you're all just trying to survive especially as everyone's all bunched up but you can still have some really good racing especially when things have kind of calmed down a bit later on in the race you might be racing with a couple other people and like the racing just gets really intense it gets really close and that's what, that's part of what makes the grand races a lot of fun <laughs> so just trying to survive um and yeah, there are shenanigans that will happen because, well, again, everyone's all bunched up. For example, right here, I ended up veering off of the track, but luckily the checkpoint was kind of a ways out, so I was kind of able to just gradually make my, my way back in and actually somehow gain spots. But yeah, so just because you might end up going a little bit wide doesn't completely mean that it's over. You can still make up a lot of spots. I mean, there are mom there were moments where I kind of just got completely wiped up because I hit one of those really solid trees but I was still able to salvage the race and make up a couple spots. But you do want to be careful because it can, well I think it depends on where you're racing because there are some I guess you could call variations where it can be really a easy to mess up somewhere and just lose all the time advantage you have. So let's, let's just say you're 10 seconds ahead of second place and you decide to go really wide because you underestimated uh, how much of a turn you needed to take. You go really wide, you have to reset back on the track and suddenly you lost that 10 second advantage and you're down in second or third place. It's even worse if you catastrophically mess up. So let's say you go really wide and crash into a, a building or a solid tree which pretty much just puts you at a complete stop and you lose about 10 billion seconds then yeah you're now down to 6th place or worse. So yeah just because you're in the lead you still have to be really careful about not messing up because there have been moments where I was doing really well and I made a catastrophic error completely messed up and I lost a lot of spots. And here's one example and this was from the same race this was a bit later on where I take the jump completely wrong and just end up hitting this barrier right here and then just lose a lot of time 
and I go from second to fifth place. So, yeah, you really want to make sure that you don't mess up. Or how about in this race where I'm having a really good race and we're kind of fighting it out for first place. So I'm just trying to be really careful and I end up having a really good little battle with that in third place. So eventually I'm going to be able to catch up to him driving behind him because you do get some slipstream. So yeah, slipstream is a thing in this game uh, and just trying to be a bit careful through this corner. Third place is going to go just a little bit wide right there. Going to be able to take third third place. But this is where I catastrophically mess up because this was where the leg of the race changes. So we switch over to street. Two, I think, yeah, I think Street Two, and right away I hit, I hit the bridge, and lose third place. So yeah, you got, you got to be really careful about this stuff because any mistake like that can just completely ruin your run. But a really great feeling is when you win the race. So yeah, in this one, it, I mean, eventually it took me a while before I was able to start getting wins. I mean, once I get, once I get a bit more used to how the cars handle, that's where. I was able to start to do to perform a lot better and eventually start to get a couple wins here and there. This one, luckily able to get the win in just under eight minutes. And you get 40,000 credits as the base and then it goes up from there. And the amount of credits that you get depends on where you finish and the assists that you have or don't have. So I think in this run, I was able to get around 80,000 credits just kidding it was actually 93,000 credits so yeah if you if you do these races and you do really well and then you can get some pretty decent credits I don't think it's the fastest way of getting credits in this game but it's definitely the funnest way I can tell you that for sure then there's the demolition royale so this is where you get placed into a crew of three to four people depending on how many people join and you drop in via plane and you can collect power-ups by driving into them and and they just try to destroy everyone else so some of the power-ups include where your ultimate charges up a bit faster you get a shield that you kind of like gives you like a little health buffer and damage bonuses the ultimates they change you into a monster truck so you do even more damage and you'll see me change into one in a bit but well, here's the thing, because Battle Royales have never been my thing, and this one is no different. But I just wanted to give it a quick try and see what it was like, but I don't see myself doing this mode that often. There we go, just smacking this guy around. One of my teammates uh, trying to help me out and trying to, to beat him up. And eventually I do get the ultimate where I do change into a monster truck. These cars do move a bit faster, and they do a heck of a lot more damage, so... For example, right there, I just shunt that guy out of the match. So I was feeling like the meanest kid in the block for a bit, but eventually you do change back into the car that you picked or the loaner car. And <laughs> yeah, this is where you want to try, hopefully get some more power-ups to try to give yourself a bit of an advantage. And then, yeah, I went ahead and got destroyed. But yeah, I just want to give this mode a try and yeah, it, for me, it's not my cup of tea. Now, I do want to go back into free roam because I, I wanted to go ahead and switch it to a boat because just being able to switch on the fly, that's pretty cool. Uh, you do get hints if there's a hidden box nearby. So you'll see that the bottom right hand corner of the screen, the map or like the ring of the map is pulsating. So it's telling you that there's something nearby, so you kind of just have to wander around and see if you're getting closer or further away from the box. And yeah, this, this, this is what these box boxes look like. So there's, I think from what I've seen, there's blue ones, which are like kind of like the common ones. There's green ones, and then I think I've seen even one pink, purple one. I've heard that there's yellow ones, but I haven't seen them, seen them for myself. But yeah, so if I see that there's one of these nearby, I just go after it. Even though like the blue ones, they don't give like the best bonuses. I mean, I still go after them because I mean, you, you get something out of it. In terms of tuning your car, so you can fine tune your car. So I think this is 
in the advanced settings for your car where you can adjust the braking power, aero, uh, the final gear, and the suspension. Now, for me, I actually try not to touch this uh, because knowing myself, I'd probably break something and just make the car horrible to drive, so I didn't really mess around this too much. Uh, and when you complete events, you do get parts for your car class and these parts have different rarity so for example green is uncommon blue is rare pink slash purple is epic and then yellow is legendary and ideally you want to get the legendary legendary parts because they'll have multiple bonuses that you can take advantage of so for example one of them gives you better slipstream benefits another one gives you better chance of getting better loot and you can even re-roll these perks but the legendary ones they also have like this i'm going to call it a super bonus that you cannot change and if you get all of your parts that have that super bonus then that's when it activates so just because you have one part with that bonus doesn't mean uh, you'll have it you need to get all of the parts with that bonus so it will take a while before it will take a while before you can get that bonus but but it, it is something to work towards and I found myself re-rolling this the bonuses quite often because I wanted to try to get better loot so I was mainly going for kind of like a loot build if that makes sense but yeah I thought it was pretty interesting to fiddle around with but that's gonna be it for this video as this video is already over 20 minutes long I haven't been able to get to everything that this game has to offer but from what I've experienced so far you know, this game has just been a lot of fun, especially Grand Raids. Like, th this mode, I just love this mode so much. So, while there are things that can be improved upon in this game, I'm still finding it a lot of fun. I keep wanting to come back to this. And this is a nice change of pace because normally I've been playing racing games that are a bit more towards the sim side. So, basically, Grand Turismo. And I haven't played an arcade racing game in quite some time. I haven't played an open world racing game in quite some time so this was a pretty nice change of pace for me it's a welcome change of pace and yeah it, it's just nice to be back into this especially since especially when i was younger i was a lot really into the arcade racing style games so yeah it, it's it's nice to come back to this and again thanks to ubisoft for providing me access to this game and that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully this video make any bit of sense. But yeah, that's going to be it for me. This is MrMCA, the world's most okay player. And I'll see you in the next video.